I'm HomeWorks consultant Megan Hudson, and today we're going to take a look inside of the textbook kit for Math 1, 5th edition. So join me as we look inside these books. Before we go piece by piece looking inside of the Math 1, 5th edition textbook kit, let's talk about what's included in the textbook kit. So the first thing you have is the teacher edition book. There are two parts to this teacher edition. Chapters 1 through 11 can be found in part 1, and chapters 12 through 21 can be found in part 2. You also have the student work text, the student review book, the student manipulative packet, the test packet, and the answer key, and then you also have the homeschool visuals. So this is what's included in the textbook kit. Let's jump into the teacher edition for Math 1. We're in part one of the teacher edition book. Right at the beginning of this book, I see a picture of DQ. He's going to be a friend who joins us throughout Math 1 to help introduce new concepts. Now remember, this teacher edition book is split into two parts. Part 1 will talk about numbers to 10, numbers to 20, addition facts to 6, place value two digit numbers. Subtraction facts to six, counting coins, addition facts to 12, time and calendar, fractions, subtraction facts to 12, and customary measurement. Then part two will have chapters on addition with two digit numbers, subtraction with two digit numbers, count on with coins, geometry, place value three digit numbers, metric measurement, addition and subtraction facts to 20, write equations with coins, time and calendar, and addition with three digit numbers. Anytime I'm going to teach a new course, I like to start by reading through the material at the beginning of the book. This will introduce the course and give me suggestions for how to teach this course. This page talks about the homeschool hub. As a homeschool parent, this is the website I'm going to go to anytime I need extra resources or instructional aids to teach this course. I might see some notes throughout the book talking about BJU Press Trove. This is where classroom teachers would go to find those extra resources. So anytime I see a note about going to the Trove, I need to remember that as a homeschool parent, I'm going to the hub. I also see a note here about after school help. This is a website that has extra tutorials and practice for some BJU Press Math and English courses. The next couple pages are going to talk about the lesson features. If you can't remember where something is laid out in this book, this is a great place to go to for a quick reminder of where to find that information. And these pages talk about what we do to review things within this course, and this also talks about what's new to this edition. And then we'll jump into our lesson plan overviews. We're actually going to jump ahead and go to chapter four. So the lesson plan overview is where I would go to get an overview for the entire chapter and would also be where I go to plan lessons for the week. I have a quick way to see the pages for the teacher edition, the work text, and the reviews if I need that extra practice for my child. I can see the objectives we're doing in the chapter. I can also see what I need for the teacher edition, if there's any instructional aids I might need to pull out, or if I need any visuals or manipulatives. These are all things that I can quickly see that I'm gonna to need to grab before I start teaching this course. And these lesson plan overviews are at the beginning of each chapter throughout this entire book. Now we're going to introduce chapter four. We're going to start by having our essential question. And this page right here is what the student would be looking at to introduce this chapter. So our essential question is how does counting help me learn? And then we're going to follow the decade numbers to help DQ put his books away. Now we're ready to jump in to the first lesson of this chapter. Each lesson starts with a lesson number and the work text pages and review pages the students will need to do in their books. I also see my objectives for the day, biblical worldview shaping notes, and the printed resources. Anytime I see that I need an instructional aid, 
I can remember that these are in the back of the teacher edition books. I also see that I need a visual, and those I can find in my homeschool visual packet. And then I also need some student manipulatives, which I can find in my student manipulative packet. I see that there's a note here that there's a digital resource that I might need, so I'm gonna check the hub for that. And I might also need some additional materials like flashcards or Unifix cubes for the teacher and each student. Now I'm going to start my practice and review. So today, we're gonna to be talking about the zero principle of addition. I'm gonna teach this part by reading this little shaded box, and then I'm going to be asking these bolded questions and I'm going to be following the instructions that are listed between those bolded questions. We're also gonna practice some math facts and do some counting. And then we're gonna start the new lesson for today. That's at the Engage section, where I'm now introducing the new concept for the day. Then I'm going to begin the Instruct portion, where I'm going to be teaching very similar to the way that I did the practice and review. I'm going to be reading those questions that are bolded and then following the instructions that's listed in between. I'm gonna continue on teaching my lesson until I get to the supply section. The apply section today says to do work text pages 45 and 46. So the first two pages that were listed in the teacher edition for this lesson 22 are the work text pages. So these are the two pages that my child would be completing to go with this lesson. If we needed extra practice, we can get that extra practice in the review book. Okay, jumping ahead. Now we're at lesson 23, where we're gonna follow the same process and do it again. So I'm gonna jump ahead now to the chapter review. At the end of each chapter, there is a chapter review. And on this chapter review, we're gonna review all the different concepts that we've talked about within this chapter. I've got some instructing sections to help review, and then I've got an apply where they're gonna do their pages, and I've got an assess if we need that extra practice in the review pages. I've even got an extended activity today. I also have those extra review pages in the review book, and there's the answers for those. Now this book is a little bit different than previous Math 1 books. At the end of chapters 4, 8, 12, and 16, there is a STEM assignment. And in this particular STEM assignment, we're talking about coding and following steps. And our goal is to help DQ take steps to get to story time. So we would have to make a logical route for DQ to get from this square to this square by saying up, down, left, or right. And we would be using these little duck feet that you can find in your instructional aids at the back of the teacher edition book to fill in these little squares for his pattern to be able to move. And it talks about how you're gonna pretend like you're a robot and you can only do what the instructions tell you to do. So now on lesson 33, we have the chapter four test and we also have a cumulative review. So the cumulative reviews are going to review anything from previous chapters so far in math one. And then we've also got a cumulative review page in the review book as well. And actually on this one, we have two pages. So that would be the second page, which is an addition fact review. Let's jump ahead now. These are the instructional aids. So anytime you need an instructional aid, you're gonna to come to the back of the book. And those will be here for you. Here's all those duck feet for the DQ assignment and helping DQ get library books. There's also some songs towards the back of the book. So if you were curious where those songs are, 
those are in the back of the teacher edition book as well. And then we wrap up the teacher edition book with an index. And that is part one of the teacher edition book. This is the Math One student work text. So this is going to be the book you would do every day as you're completing the lesson. The student would write in this book and you should be able to keep it intact if you wish to. Otherwise, there is a perforated edge on each page where you could tear the page out if you wanted to. I'm gonna jump ahead now to chapter four. This is what we were looking at in our teacher edition book today. So here's the intro page, and then these would be the pages where we would be doing our assignment. Now typically in this book, you would do the front side of the page together, and then you would assign the back side of the page as the assignment to do independently. And then here's our chapter review and our coding pages, and then our cumulative review, and then that would hop us into the next chapter. So this is the Math One Reviews book. So if you needed extra practice, this is where you would go to get it. This is also set up similar to the work text, where you'd have one page front and back that you could assign each day. This book also does have the perforated edge, so you could easily tear these pages out if you wanted to. And then here's our chapter four review and our cumulative review. And then that would begin our chapter five pages. Next up, we have our student manipulatives packet. So before I began teaching for the year, I would use this page here to kind of put this entire packet together in a way that I could make it easy for me to grab what I need for that day. So for instance, I'd have this clock ready to go. I would have a, the DQ puppet on the next page ready to go. I would keep all of my place value mats sorted in a way that I could get to them easily and I would put them probably into Ziploc bags or a binder or a little sorting container, but just something that I could grab pretty quickly when I'm getting ready to teach for the day. This is cardstock, so you could take this entire packet and punch it out and they will last you the year. You've got different shapes, colors, and counters are coming up. And then we've got some coins. We have our one squares and our 10 strips and our 100 squares. And again, I would just sort these out at the beginning of the year and put them in a bag or container, something that I can grab quickly when I'm ready to teach. And then you wrap up this packet with some fraction cards. So this is the manipulative packet. Sometimes the teacher edition might ask me to use a visual to help present something in the lesson. So I'm going to come to the homeschool visual packet to find those. These are all printed on cardstock and the first page has a contents list for me. Now the teacher edition, if it wants me to use a visual, it will give me a number to help find the chart. So if it said visual 1A, I'm going to look for the 1A in the bottom right corner of the card. I've also got larger items like what the student had in their manipulative packet. and I can use these to help present the information in the lessons. So this is the homeschool visual packet.
The last thing I have for this textbook kit is the assessment packets. So this is the assessment packet that a student would use to take their test at the end of a chapter. And then this packet is where I would go to find the answers. Thanks for joining me as we looked inside of the Math 1 5th edition textbooks. If you have any questions about any of the materials, please feel free to reach out to your local Homeworks by Precept consultant. We would love to answer your questions.